Hey guys, welcome back to What It AI, where we'll explore the cutting edge of artificial intelligence, tech development, and their impact on our world. I'm What It, and today we're diving into the topic that's been stirring quite a buzz in the tech community: artificial intelligence. It's a term that seems to be everywhere these days, from self-driving car to AI-generated content. There's no denying that AI is revolutionizing our world. But with all the excitement and hype, it's important to take a step back and ask, like. Are we are we getting ahead of ourselves here? To get some perspective, we are turning to one of the most influential figures in the tech world, Linus Rivers. If you're not familiar with him, Linus is the mastermind behind the Linux kernel, the core of Linux operating system that powers everything from smartphones to uh, supercomputers. In a recent conversation with Drake, the head of open source program office at Verizon, Linus shared his candid thoughts on the current state of AI. the hype surrounding it and where he sees ai fitting in the future of linux development and let me tell you his insight might surprise you so let's dive in and see what linus rovals really thinks about the future of ai and what it mean for all of us in the tech world guys before we dive into the video i need to warn you ai is replacing jobs at an alarming rate and it's set to revolutionize every single industry the harsh truth is only those who stay updated on the latest in ai will stand a chance to adapt that's where i come in i post daily videos on ai update to keep you informed on how to upskill yourself in the rapidly changing ai driven world so you don't find yourself out of a job so make sure you subscribe because if you are not keeping up you're getting left behind let's get started one is perfect. So this is we we talked about all these depressing things and let's go for something that's fun and entirely non-controversial. So let's talk a little bit about AI and large language models and wow. Wow. <laughs> I like you you're as cynical it's, as I am. Yeah, that's I that's a good sign. It's a good sign. Um so uh, obviously this is this is the current hype kit on the block and and if you want to double your salary at ai to your title and uh, it, it's hilarious to watch the the self description of of companies and every company on earth has an ai angle to their story as of this year it is yeah. amazing uh, but what i find so interesting is this idea that gen ai is going to be the end of you know insert whatever end of programmers the end of authors the end of movie creators the end of so many jobs so you are going to be replaced by an ai model finally <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i don't know i i hate the hype I, at the same time i think ai is very interesting i yeah. when i went to university we were still talking about rule based expert systems and bayesian logic and and all of this kind of thing and it it was called ai but it was not in any way intelligent um and and i do think that the last few years have been interesting today's yeah but uh i I don't want to be part of the hype. Yeah. And uh I will say that the AI revolution has had even on the kernel level a uh, few positives. For example, uh a company like Nvidia who is not exactly famous for being great at at interacting with the kernel community has actually been much more active and and been involved in the linux memory management code because suddenly they start caring about linux when when they are selling a lot of ar hardware mm -hmm. i mean it used to be crypto and and it's still obviously gpus and and it's being used in in big servers and running linux so it has actually had a positive impact but my personal opinion is let's wait 10 years and see where it actually goes before we make all these crazy announcements of your job will be gone in 5 years. Well, I think we already see lasting and and almost irreversible change happening happening through many of these AI tools not on the hype gen AI front but just at the in the tools that make our lives better and easier i i keep calling it autocorrect on steroids and people are mad at me but the if if you use an an uh, a gen ai and hopefully an slm tool 
to help you with, with basically code completion in your editor. Isn't that a, a, a huge yeah. opportunity? So I'm, I'm actually, I mean, I'm one of those people who are very optimistic in, about AI, and I'm looking forward to the tools to actually find bugs. We have a lot of tools tooling around the kernel and around any software projects, obviously. Uh, and uh, we use them religiously, but making the tools smarter is not a bad thing. And I, to some degree, compare it to writing things in assembly, which literally I started doing with the initial kernel was, I think, about 50% assembly language and using a compiler. And, and using smarter tools is just the next inevitable step. So that's going to happen, but I don't think it's necessarily the gloom and doom that some people say it is, and I definitely don't think it's the promised world that the people who are having their hand out for cash say it is. So uh, but, I, you need to be a bit cynical about this whole hype cycle in the tech industry. I hope yeah. you all realize that. It be, before AI, it was crypto. Before crypto, it was whatever. It's, it's a cloud native. Cloud yeah. native. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> there's a loud voice in the front. That's not hype. OK. I, I mean, the hype, there's always like a grain of reality behind it. But you need to be careful about all the BS around that grain. You can't say BS. Um, so, oh. so the beautiful science is what he meant. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> the I, I look at these tools and I look at you said assembler, and then we talk about compilers. Then we talk about things like sparse, a compiler that tries to find certain kinds of bugs. We talk about Julia to do code refactoring. We have had for the last thirty plus years a sequence of tools that helped make development better and more robust. Yep. And in, in that lineage of things, I, I, I hope there is really cool stuff coming down. Yeah, I mean, um, we have tools that do kernel rewriting uh, with very complicated scripts and pattern recognition and things like that. And, and that is actually literally why I think um, AI can be a huge help, because some of these tools are very hard to use, because you have to specify things at a low enough level that the natural reaction would be to, hey, can we make this a bit easier and automate more of it? Uh, so, so yes. I. One, one of the interesting angles that this whole large language model and, and the, the training data brings up is the role that data plays in, in our modern world, where it, we all talk about open source, about the source code, the algorithms being available, but open data really is kind of that the, almost the more interesting question. No, today. it's not. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's not to me, and, and actually, I'd like to clarify that, I mean, the LF obviously has open data projects, and <laughs> to other people it's more interesting. And that is, I think, the whole, for me, the point of open source is that different people are interested in different things. And, and uh, I was always interested in the low-level nitty-gritty of how the CPU actually works, which is why I'm working on the kernel still. But, uh, but yes, you're right that in many situations, what is important is the, is the data that you then use to generate pattern, find patterns and generate new interesting information with. But, but to me, that, that's not what I tend to do. And yeah, there I, is that saying, beautiful science in, beautiful science out. Mm. 